Hi, that Paul guy. And no, the thumbnail is not clickbait. I really am able to get Cyberpunk 2077 to run on an older HP two core, four thread touchscreen all in one. Okay, so you're thinking, are you going to tell us how you did this or not? And I will in just a moment. But first, let me give you a little bit of like background on the computer and what's going on with it and all that stuff. It's an HP all-in-one from a couple years back. It was the same one that my sister had issues with, that the hard drive messed up and the registry, data, everything got corrupted. We had to completely go back, make sure we could repair the drive, uh, reinstall Windows, reinstall all the drivers. By this time, she just she threw her hands up and said, you know what, do whatever you're going to do. I'm going to get a new computer. And we already did a video on her computer, her new computer, by the way. So anyway, we go back to this all-in-one, uh, two cores, four threads. It's got eight gig of DDR4 memory. It's got a 7,200 speed, one terabyte hard drive. But the downside is it's a 6100U or a U6100, I believe it is. It's a two core, four thread. It's got HD 520 graphics, four gig shared with the system memory. So this is really only meant for regular office productivity. I mean, at home, like browsing the internet, doing Word documents, uh, maybe you look in your schedule, checking emails and all that stuff. It's not meant for anything strenuous. And in fact, it was already given her issues trying to do some of those basic things when it ended up dying on her. So this isn't something that was going to be the supercomputer or the thing that we needed to salvage and try to make work. So why did I even try to do anything with it? Because I thought once I had already got it back up and got it back working, it will make somebody a decent computer. And I'll probably give it to somebody that needs one, just a regular, all, you know, just a basic all-in-one that can browse the web or whatever. But I thought, okay, let's try it out and let's see if anything will work on it. Any, get, any kind of games will play on this computer. A quick word about trying to get the gameplay footage doing this. Uh, it's very difficult to hold the camera and to be able to play at the same time so if the video footage looks a little bit bad i'm sorry but it is what it is the reason I had i had to try to use a camera separately is it does have an hdmi on the back but if i tried to ex extend the displays or if i tried to take that to say a video capture uh, it, it fails miserably and i can't stream obs from in the game or from on the computer itself it fails miserably as well because there's just not enough resources to even play the game much less trying to video capture the game so i had to try to do you know uh, with a camera while i was trying to play and so if it does look bad i'm very sorry but that's the best i could do i don't have another person and um, really it was kind of difficult trying to set that up so I thought I would start with some things that were like age appropriate year wise, uh, things that were a little bit older that, that maybe were out when this computer were out. So I, I tried a couple games uh, like uh, CSGO, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I tried Fallout 4. I tried Abe's Odyssey, which was a game that I got off, got off of Steam that I originally played on the PS4 and a few others to try to get an idea of just how this might work. Uh, the first one was CSGO. I, I tried that at 1080p, very low settings, ran the benchmark on it to a whopping 7 frames per second. Wow. Yeah, unplayable. Uh, not even at its best, not even at its very, very best would it be able to do it. So I cut it down to 720p. Again, very low settings. And managed to get in the neighborhood of about, I don't know, 18 frames per second. So it, it still... Very, very unplayable. Not very good at all. It, it didn't uh, didn't really help. So um, here we are trying to figure out if there is anything that this could could run at all. I, I tried Fallout 4, got a whopping 8 to 9 frames per second on that, and it was horrible. And I thought, I, I really was confused. And I, just, I did try to turn the video settings down on all these games were like 720p or very low settings or the lowest I could go on all these. And it just, it really struggled mightily. Abe's Odyssey, which was a game that I thought maybe run on this because it ran on a PS4. And it, quite frankly, some of those Abe's games ran on much older hardware that would have been a lot harder to run on. But again, it, uh, it was semi-playable between 18 and 20 frames per second or so. It's a side scroller, so you can probably get away with it, but it was kind of rough. It was it was really, really difficult to play. 
And you're thinking, was there anything at all that worked on this thing? Well, yeah, there was actually a pinball game, FX3, that, that I got 60 frames per second, and another scroller called Badlands that worked out pretty well, and it was 60 frames per second, and it was fairly playable. Uh, but even things that were older that took like an emulator to play, like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, a Sega game that you can also buy on Steam, complete no-go. Uh, it was it was really, really bad. Unless you cut the graphics way back to where, I mean, it looked horrible, but you could squeeze about 30 frames per second out of it that way. Not the best effort. So you're thinking, okay, with, with all of this, how in the world would you get 60 frames per second out of Cyberpunk? There's a trick to it. So let me tell you, I wasn't using any kind of cloud service like NVIDIA's cloud service. Uh, I wasn't using Microsoft. I wasn't using uh, anything like Stadia. None of those. What I was doing is using Steam. It has a feature that if you have that game installed on another computer on your home network, you can stream it to this computer. For that matter, you can stream it from one computer to another. It's an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X with an RTX 2070 video card in it. Works great. It's got a lot of storage. It's got a lot of capacity. It's got 32 gig of RAM. It really, I mean, it handles what I need to handle it for, for editing and some game playing. So I was able to use this to stream off of onto the all-in-one. And yes, it works great. Being that it's on the same network and both of them are wired together, the latency was almost nil. And so you don't have that problem of a cloud gaming solution where there is some latency built in or latency involved. Now, some of those might do pretty well. I hear some are better than others. NVIDIA seems to be with that. Anyway, NVIDIA seems to be about the best to do that. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, but the problem with that is, is you still have to buy the game or you still have to own the game and you still have to set up. This, I mean, obviously you have to own the game. I did buy the game, but Steam allows me to go ahead and play that or have that in one location and play it on another computer in the other room, even if it's a low power laptop or an all-in-one computer like this one is. So the solution to my gaming then was to go ahead and stream it in, from the other room on my other computer. So overall, the gameplay, was, I mean, it was very good. Between 58 and 60 frames per second, I didn't have any major issues, no glitches, no stuttering. It worked great. The monitor itself is a good monitor. It's a 1080p monitor uh, running at 60 frames per second. And I was able to stream it from this editing rig onto that computer in the other room and get that same 60 frames per second. So I was pretty happy. And overall, it was a good experience. Would it have been a good experience if I was actually trying to play that natively on that computer? there's no way it would have worked. I would have been lucky to get a frame per second or half a frame or, or whatever. I, I would have been lucky if I got anything to render at all or if it would have even played. I'm not even sure that it would have even tried to play. I don't know if it's DirectX 12. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, but if you have a low, so low power solution like a smaller laptop or something like that that you have in your bedroom, maybe you're with your significant other and she wants to watch a movie and you want to play a game and you've got a laptop, but your computer that you normally play on is in the other room. Well, maybe you can stream on your laptop while she's watching her movie and both of you guys are happy. Or if you're trying to get in some late night gaming just to, you know, before you go to bed, but you don't want to play in the game room, but you've got your laptop, maybe you can stream it from Steam. Just an option. I thought I, uh, I, I figured out how to do it. And I thought that since I was trying to play around with this all in one, I would see if it would work. And sure enough, it works great. A uh, very pleasant experience, and I enjoyed it, and I would definitely do it again. So while you cannot get 60 frames per second on an all-in-one two-core four-thread PC uh, from eight years ago or so, you can stream it to it very, very well, and which makes me think that some of these streaming services might have, they, they might be onto something here. If you've got low-end hardware, it might work out pretty well, because streaming it from Steam certainly worked very well. So there you go. Uh, so if you liked the video at all or you had it, found it informational or you know, anything like that or helped you, uh, just toss a like on it. I'd appreciate it. If not, you can throw a dislike, but kind of let me know what's going on. Any comments are welcome. Let me know if it's something you'd thought of trying to do before or if you've ever tried it or you do it.
or you don't do it, or you never thought of it. I mean, you let me know. Don't be afraid to visit me on the other socials. I'm still trying to hit 500 subs. So if you do me a favor, if you're not subscribed, hit that red button down there. I really would appreciate it. It would make me feel better. It might even make you feel better. I don't know. But anyway, that is all I have for now. I've got some cases that I got to take a look at. I've got an Intel build coming along that is going to uh, go rival with a the 3100, the Ryzen 3 3100 that I did a couple weeks ago. I did some mark, benchmarks and everything on that. Now we get to do the Intel side and see how much bang for the buck you can get from the Intel. Uh, but that's coming up. So if you're not subscribed, please do. But anyway, that is all I got for right now. So until next time, I'll uh, I'll see you later.